Right, I tell you there, champs, and I am very tired, but I'm going to crank this out. Gaming review, I've just done all the testing. I will do a specific MacBook Pro gaming review, and that's where I'll actually game in Mac OS, and I'll do some other benchmarks as well. But I've put this in Windows, tested it out. We're testing out this Vega 20, and wow, this thing can friggin' game. Like, it can really game, and we're talking you know, 60 frames per second, 1080p high settings, yeah high settings. AMD have said, yeah, you can play ultra settings at 1080p. Oh, it's not that good. There will be some games that you can play ultra settings 1080p. It's roughly around a GTX 1050 Ti, I'd say, maybe a bit more at GTA 5. Now watch the whole benchmark. We'll go through the whole benchmark. Just watch how the CPU starts off at 45 watts and then goes down to around 15 watts. Depending on the game, this CPU can maintain around 15 to 25 watts. That's because when it uses the graphics card and the CPU at the same time, that's all it can handle. Now, it doesn't affect gaming. You're getting over 60 frames per second. Even after 20 minutes gaming, it's still getting 60 frames per second. Most games, other than Witcher 3 and Deus Ex Mankind Divided, which I always include just because they are so hard on the system, which those games, you're getting an over 40 40 frames per second you know drop it down to medium you'll get up around at 60 there so this thing is no joke and comparing it to the gaming review i done on the last macbook pro with the rx 560x it looks like it's around 35 percent faster now i've only got this a few hours ago so that's my preliminary results about 35 percent faster apple said it was around 66 percent faster and that's in blender or something like that but it's definitely 30 35 maybe even more and if you could actually have this graphics card in a gaming laptop wow it would be friggin amazing this mac is only 87 watt tdp an XPS 15 is like 130 watt TDP. That is amazing that they can get this much performance out of an 87 watt TDP. Did I say 97? I'm tired. 87 it is. So it's probably got a TDP of around 35 to 45, something like that. I'm not 100% sure. Now what's great about this Vega 20, it's double the bandwidth. It's got like 20 compute units compared to 16 of the 560. And it's got a much wider memory bus, like 124 bit versus 128 bit. Four gigabytes HBM memory, it just smashes it. If you had a gaming laptop, for example, and you're using this Vega, this thing would friggin' fly because you can imagine if you had a laptop with a CPU you that can maintain 35 watts or even 45 watts even better you can imagine the benchmarks would be a lot better maybe up to 10 frames per second better so it may even be faster than 1050 ti now when it comes to temperature for some reason i couldn't run fire strike or i couldn't run a time spy it's something to do with the gpu not reporting as you can see in the gameplay you cannot see the gpu temperature or speed so hopefully eventually we will be able to see that but given that when it runs at 15 to 20 watts the cpu it's only about 80 degrees. You can imagine that the GPU is around the same sort of temperature. That's usually how it is, you know, CPU and GPU when they share the same heat pipe. Usually the GPU is actually cooler than the CPU. So the GPU is probably running at around 80 degrees. This will get up to 100 degrees. That's when it will throttle down to the 15 watt TDP. But then it will maintain that 15 to 20 watts. And you're still getting over 60 frames per second. So it's a gaming beast. I've got a lot more videos to come out on this. I'm cranking these out as quick as I can. I've got to go to bed now and I really appreciate the like because, yeah, I'm really tired and this took a lot of effort. Anyway, catch you next one, guys. Tally ho.